There was always evidence linking Calvin Hoover to Christine Jessup's murder, just not the science to prove it. In relation to uh, Calvin Hoover, um, we've utilized an investigative technique that is fairly new in, uh, in policing, certainly in Canada. The technique is called genetic genealogy, and it started with a decades-old semen sample found on the victim's underwear. Police sent the sample to this forensic lab in Texas. It cross-referenced it to a DNA database with samples by people who have given permission for their information to be accessed by law enforcement agencies. That's how a genetic family tree started to form. If you find pieces of DNA that are, are, are large and shared between two people, there's a hypothesis that they probably came from a common ancestor. And, and so you look for multiple genetic matches, and it may be an uncle or maybe someone else. It's different every time. The tree gave Toronto police a new starting point in a cold case. It provides a potential, and I must stress a potential, uh, family uh, lineage from a DNA sample. Uh, then it is up to a police investigator to build from that potential family line lineage. Police built a new list of persons of interest by cross-referencing the names in the family tree to old case files. That's how Calvin Hoover's name popped up. The name Calvin Hoover, uh, upon um, review of the investigative file, is a name that uh, we know had a uh, connection to the Jessup family. By coincidence, Hoover's DNA was on record from an autopsy performed after his death in 2015. Police were able to test it against the sample found at the crime scene. And that's when finally, decades later, they identified the real murderer. You know, when we talk about a cold case and the value of a cold case unit, uh, we're just not going to give up and somebody is always going to be looking. Looking and with more hope now of catching the real criminals too. Joanna Rumeliotis, CBC News, Toronto.